If you plan to put text on a t-shirt, on a sweatshirt, on any product and sell it commercially, you need to legally make sure you have the rights to use that text. Because you'd be surprised by how many common phrases you might think to put on a shirt. And then once you actually look it up, find out that they're actually trademarked and you're not able to use them. And for those of you who already knew this, did you also know that there is a brand new USPTO system? So if you haven't done a trademark search in a while, you might be pretty confused by the new layout of everything because it has changed a lot. So today let's go over how we're going to check all of our phrases before we sell them commercially using the brand new USPTO system. So this is what the new USPTO government website looks like. And to find this, I usually just Google trademark search or USA trademark search. And it's usually one of the first two that shows up in the search results. So if you have any text and you would be surprised by the number of things that you think are common phrases that are actually trademarked, and this is how you can double check them. So say you wanted to create a mental health shirt. In the search bar here, I'm gonna type in, let's say mental health matters, which is a very common phrase I've seen used. And then we get to a page that looks like this. And you can see there is 400,000 results. That sounds like a lot to look through, but it's not as overwhelming as it looks. When I first opened this page, it's showing way more results than the old system did. And it freaked me out a little bit until I played around and got a handle on what everything meant. So at the side here, we see live and dead. We're gonna turn off all of the dead trademarks. They've either been rejected, they've expired. They're things we don't need to pay attention to anymore. And now we have this filtered down. You can change the view at the side here. Personally, I prefer this one. You can have less information. I prefer the semi information so I can see things more at a glance. And you're gonna see there's two different types of pictures here. We have one that just has this plain text. And then we have one here that actually looks like it's a logo. And if you scroll down, you're gonna see a mix of these which look like logos and some are just plain text. So the ones that look like logos are actually just protecting this exact design. So if we click into them, we can see more information about this trademark. So scrolling down, we can see the mark type. It's called a service mark. And if you open up mark information, it will tell you exactly what this trademark is for. So this mark consists of the following three circles, color green, gray, and green, extremely specific and is talking exactly about this design here. So any of these you don't really need to worry about because you're probably not stealing someone's logo. The ones we are a little bit more concerned with are the two here, which just look like plain text. If I open them here and then we scroll down, you can see that this is a trademark. If we open up mark information, it says this mark consists of standard characters without any claim to a particular font style, size, or color. Meaning no matter what way this is designed, this text in any form is trademarked. But does that mean we can't use it? There's more information we need to look at before we decide. So actually, if we take a look at this one here, it says live application, waiting examination, meaning this isn't live yet, meaning we could still use this until it's approved. And if you scroll down even more, under goods and services, you can drop this down. This is for sports shirts. So if you are selling anything but sports shirts, this is fine to use on. And coming back to this page here, it actually makes it really easy to see. You can see right here, under that one that we had clicked in, the mental health matters, it says status pending. So it is not registered yet, meaning it is not approved, meaning you can still use it even if you did have sports shirts. Though I would still probably avoid it if you were going to sell sports shirts because you aren't going to get a flag when this is actually approved. If it get, gets approved, doesn't mean it's going to be approved. So there's still a chance it won't be caught, but just to save your own butt. This one is a word mark. It's just text. It's live. It's registered. So can we use this one? So does this one block us from using it? It actually does not because if you take a look at this one under goods and services, it is registered for promotional and public awareness campaigns for mental health. And if you wanna read more about this goods and services, again, just click in, scroll down goods and services, and you can read exactly what this was applied for. And now scrolling down even more, I'm just gonna take a look at these. And we have more of the design marks, so ones that aren't really applied to us. And then we start getting into ones that are just not even relevant. I think they somewhat have hints towards mental health, but really they're not applicable to what we're planning to sell at all. 
none of them refer to mental health matters. So we're actually okay to use this, say, if we were selling sweatshirts. And on your search, if you wanted to turn off any pending, you're able to turn off any pending as well, just to filter that out as well. And then if you also wanted just to make sure that your search is quicker, say you did have a search that had tens, hundreds of relevant searches, then you could just search up here, shirts and see which ones come up which apply to shirts or you can type in whatever product you're planning to sell this on just so you can filter this further and see the results quicker so in order for you not to be able to use something this trademark has to be live it has to be registered it has to be a standard word mark meaning it has no design elements to it and it needs to be registered for goods and services the exact same of what you plan to sell and if any of these is not applied to any of the listings that comes under your search, then you are okay to sell this. I have seen many chats out there with people stating certain things are trademarked, but they haven't looked at exact specifics. So I hope this helps you find out exactly what text you're allowed to include on your parent on demand products. And something to keep in mind for all of you out there, just because say you search Harry Potter, you search Hakuna Matata, or any phrases you got from a movie or a TV show that are extremely popular and they're not showing up in the USPTO search, they are still most likely trademarked. Even if it does not show up in the trademark search here, if you are trying to sell something which is based on someone else's brand, meaning someone is buying that sweatshirt from you because they love Taylor Swift. Even if it does not reference Taylor Swift exactly, if she sees or her team sees relevance and suspects that you are profiting off of their brand, they have a right to take you down as well. A little cautionary tale that I experienced, I created a van life digital nomad shirt and I had a van on there. It had no logo on the van whatsoever, but Volkswagen actually had me reported and it was taken down because it had likeness to a VW van. All right guys, I hope this helps. Thank you and I guess stay legal, <laughs> bye.